everyone and welcome to Miss Estric Biology and this updated video for AQA topic 3 on surface area to volume ratio. Now before I jump into it, let me make you aware of this brand new freebie that I have that you can download. Click the link in the description or just go to missestric.co.uk forward slash YouTube workbooks and you can then download all of these workbooks completely for free. And it takes you to this here where you can get all of my entire topic workbooks which basically work you through every slide of my entire topic PowerPoints. And you could use that for the section that's relevant for this video here. But for now, let's jump into today's content. This is a tiny part of the specification and it starts by knowing that this is linked to exchange surfaces and the exchange surfaces in organisms have many similar adaptations to make the transport across that surface more efficient. One of those being a large surface area compared to the volume, or in other words, the surface area to volume ratio. And this is the relationship between the size of an organism or the structure and its surface area to volume ratio plays a significant role in the types of adaptations an organism will have. So if we have a look at this concept then in a bit more detail. To work it out, you would need to work out the surface area of an object, which for a cube, that's pretty straightforward because you just need to work out the area of one side and then times it by six. The volume for the cube would be the length times the height times the width. So for this cube, which is one centimeter in dimension on this side, that would work out as a surface area of six centimeters squared and a volume of one centimeters cubed. So the surface area to volume ratio would be your surface area divided by your volume. Six divided by one is six. And we can see that as the cubes get larger, calculate the surface area to volume ratio each time, we go from a surface area to volume ratio of six to three to two. And the pattern that we're seeing here is the larger the object, the smaller the surface area is compared to the volume. Whereas the smaller the object, the larger the surface area is compared to its volume. And this has a big impact in biology because that means small organisms such as a single celled amoeba would have a very large surface area compared to its volume. And that would mean it's very efficient at exchanging substances directly across its surface. And as well as that, it would also imply that there is a shorter distance from the outside of the organism to the very center, again, meaning you've got a shorter diffusion distance for whatever substance it is, let's say oxygen, to get from the outside to the inside to every part of the organism. So as a result, very small organisms do exchange surfaces by simple diffusion across their surface, and they haven't had to evolve to have special organ systems for this. Whereas in contrast, larger organisms, because they are bigger in size, that means their surface area to volume ratio is smaller. And that means there is a relatively less surface area available for the exchange of substances such as oxygen across the surface compared to their volume. And that's why larger organisms such as mammals, for example, humans, have evolved to have these specialized organ systems. For example, the respiratory system where gases are exchanged. Now, going back to the idea of smaller organisms, we've already said that they've got a large surface area compared to their volume, and that allows this efficient exchange directly across their surface, so they don't require that specialised exchange or transport system. Smaller mammals have a high surface area to volume ratio still, and that is going to mean because they've got this large surface area to volume ratio, they lose heat rapidly across their surface because they've got this large exchange surface. And that is why to replace that lost heat, they have a very high metabolic rate and high rate of respiration. And this high metabolic rate is what is providing the energy so that they can maintain a stable body temperature, especially in colder conditions. Large animals lose heat more slowly across their surface because they have that lower surface area to volume ratio. And because of this, their metabolic rate can be relatively lower as well. So adaptations then, back to that first concept we were talking about, some of the ways that larger organisms 
have evolved to increase the surf serotonin volume ratio at these surfaces. So number one is villi and microvilli, and you find these, for example, in the ileum to increase the rate of absorption of digested food. The sheer number of alveoli and also the branching bronchioles are going to increase gas exchange. Spiracles and tracheoles, so that is in terrestrial insects, that is going to increase the rate of gas exchange. Gill filaments and lamellae in fish, again for gas exchange. And then also for plants, they've got very, very thin and wide leaves, again to increase the surface area to volume ratio, this time for gas exchange as well. Lastly, we have the fact that there are many capillaries, not the case for plants, but for all of the other structures we've talked about. There would be a blood supply or we'd have those capillaries to reduce the diffusion distance and also that can help to maintain the concentration gradient as well. So that takes us to the end of this short bit of theory. Don't forget if you do want to have all of the theory in my notes, which has the key marking points, 10 recall questions per subtopic, examiner tips from real examiners, plus so much more, all my flashcards that cover all of the key terms and key marking points that is linked in the description. But that is it for today's video. Hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in a video very soon.